do Bio City Geeks pre-pandemic uh, uh, coverage. We only got half of us today. Jason is stuck at work, so that he can get off. But I'm here with Rod Thornton. Rod, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Here. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Um, so you've been drawing. You're you're an artist. You, we'll get we'll get into your projects in a second. But you've been drawing for what, twenty years now? Fifty. Fifty. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There but we go. Uh, professionally, I would say. I used to do uh, fine arts, mm -hmm. and I left that for a while, went into the fire department, Air Force, life happened, and then I started back again in 2000, around 2000, 2002. Okay. So yeah, it's been around, around 18, 20 years. Okay. Um, that That's kind of a divergent where you start fine arts and then you go what, Air Force, firefighter, and then back to art. Yes. How, how does that... Well, what it was was uh, I was in the military and I was doing paintings, and uh, I, I, let me back up a little bit more. I actually was playing music in the '80s. Had a couple of records came out, and then I painted during the day and played music at night. So as I was painting, I was doing portraits and paintings for people's homes and different things like that. And then uh, I joined the the Air Force, All right? And I got a chance to go around the the country doing the choir there and uh, all kind of presentations for generals and all that kind of stuff and then I uh, came back to Houston and joined the Houston Fire Department and did that for 15 years before I started doing comic books in 2005 when I left the fire department. Damn okay so uh, <laughs> it's that, a lot of information. That's a, no that's, that's a, uh, in, a lot of incredible information that's, that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Um, okay so you you go from well, while you were in the fire department and the Air Force, mm -hmm. were you reading comics? I always, I've, I've been collecting comics mm -hmm. since the 60s, late 60s. Okay. And um, always looking for comic books and I, I found the Falcon and, and uh, the, the, the different ones with Captain America. Conan was my favorite, All right. Thor was my favorite, and uh, other favorite rather. And um, I've always collected, I didn't do a lot of reading in them gotcha. because I was doing the art side. So I'm looking through the pages and looking through the pages and then I got into the stories and then I realized, ah, oh, he's pretty good. <laughs> you know? Who, uh, what artist would you say had the biggest influence on you? Um, in art overall, mm -hmm. it was Frank Frazetta. Okay. And then... Uh, yeah, because he had the Conan. Was, yeah, he had yeah. the Conan and all of the fantasy art yeah. and everything from the 60s and then... Uh, Let's see, um, then he did that movie Fire and Ice and some of the other stuff like that. Right. But uh, then from there it was John Bashima and uh, Humberto Ramos, uh, just so many good guys. But uh, those are the ones that I, I've, I've had a chance to meet and talk to, and, and but I love their work. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, what's your, we'll stay on the comic books for just a second. What's your most, when I say valuable, not price, but like to, to you, what's your most valuable comic? The one that I have the, the most valuable to me was, um, I would say, uh, some of the Conan issues that I had from uh, 75, that had, uh, from 72, that okay. actually had Jamashima and some of the artwork there. And a couple that I have from Rudy Nebras. Gotcha. Um, other than that, I think it's more of the, the one that I did for Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so let's ju let's jump jump back into that. You you retired from the fire uh, from being a firefighter. Mm -hmm. Did you retire? Did when you retired was it? Yeah, I'm gonna go, go do that now, or was it something? Yes, that, yeah? yes. What it was was uh, I had been in the fire department. I got injured in the fire department. I was working in public relations, mm -hmm. and then uh, I started looking at you know where am I gonna go from here? Or am I gonna stay here and retire or? Am I going to pursue what I wanted to do? And I always say that if, uh, something you want to do, go ahead and pursue it. Right. So if I'm going to pursue it, I want to pursue it all the way. So I told my wife, hey, I'm leaving the fire department and I'm going to go make comic books. And how, she's kind of like, how will that go over? It actually went like, she knows that I, I do a lot of uh, different things. Right. So being able to uh, take care of the family was just, hey, if, if you say you're going to do it, I trust you. There you go. And so, here we are, and this year I got a chance to take her to Dubai with me, and that was like, hey, <laughs> there you we're go, doing it. Ten there years getting here, but we here, so you know. All right, so uh, when you came back in the into comics, when you came back to art, 
and that's the strange thing. I never been never thought that I would be working in comic books when I was reading them and collecting them. Right. And reading. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> reading them and collecting them. Um, uh, you know, you never think about yourself being there. You you have the dream, but you don't right. think about. You know, it's gonna you gonna make it. It's kind of like working in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Even if you just get in and you're on special teams, you're still in the NFL. You're still in the NFL. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what it's like. Who? Mm -hmm. What was your first? Uh, do you remember your first issue that you did? The the first issue that I did for someone else uh -huh. was actually wasn't a comic book. It was uh, I did twenty digital paintings for Boom Studios in Europe for Aliens. Really? And they were uh, they were paintings that I did on the computer and right. everything. But they sold them in Europe. And then I got a chance to do uh, a cover for Ninja Turtles number sixty three. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a chance to uh, work on a couple of projects with um, who was it? Dynamite. Yes. Or I did uh, I did uh, some pictures for Red Sonja mm -hmm. and uh, some other ones for Vampirella that they did at, at San Diego Comic Con. Okay. And then from there, Red Five uh, gave me my first ish series. Right. And I did After Eating for them, and it's been selling and going really well. And. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it's. I was surprised when people started bringing them to the table for me to sign, and I'm like, "Oh, you, you got that? I, I did. Yeah. I did that." Mm -hmm. Um, so let's jump on to. Well, first, uh, as a Ninja Turtle fan, mm -hmm. were you a Turtle fan in the '80s? Yes. So my, 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 my kids watched the Ninja Turtles. I always, I liked the first story that they did. Right. It was really kind of gritty. Yeah. And then it, when they turned into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, yeah. I was like, uh, "Okay, teenagers." And, and so. <laughs> But after watching it, I enjoyed it, and, yeah. and I got a chance to meet the guys who created it. And uh, um, um, I'm trying to think, Eastman and Laird. Uh, yeah, and I got to meet them, mm -hmm. and then also the ones that worked on the television show. Which okay. Was, um, can't think of the name. Right no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Don't worry. Um, okay, so let's jump on to your products now, because you've got what you've got. Uh, you've got um, uh, after Eden. And then Children of the Apocalypse. Children of the Apocalypse is a uh, book that we, we worked on a novel. I put it out once before. Mm -hmm. um, when I, before I kind of knew, you know, the, the 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 how to actually do comic books really well. Okay. And um, so when I put it out, the story caught on. A lot of people liked it. Right. And then I, I realized, oh, I'm not able to produce it every month. Like uh, like working for Marvel or something like this because uh, right. I had to do the writing, the creating, the characters, everything. Yes, you, you have and to so, be God on this thing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little difficult. Yeah, and and it is. And so um, what I found was um, I had to go and learn a lot of things in the industry. So okay. going and working for other people helped me with that. When I put out uh, Children of the Apocalypse. Uh, I got some issue, some um, interest from movie people and uh, different things like that. So over the past four years, I've had it on hiatus, and I've created uh, Alien Hunter and um, Epsilon Gates and another one called uh, Pretty Poison. All of these are tied in what I call the Angel Comics universe. Okay. So we're coming back out with Children of the Apocalypse, and instead of starting like Star Wars doing issue episode four, five, and six, right. we're actually going to start from the beginning. Okay. And let everybody see where it goes from there, and then it'll pick up with where we started, because um, we actually kind of started in the middle of the series when we did the first gotcha. comic book. Gotcha. So Amanda McMurray's back on board. She's uh, worked for DC Comics. She did Batman, Wonder Woman, and all of them. So she's on as an editor now. Okay. And um. Angel Compass is looking to get Coda back out there, uh, Alien Hunter and uh, Epsilon Gates. Okay. First three that were coming. And I'm working with another guy named uh, Adrian Nelson who has a book called um, Badass. And we were helping with uh, the publishing and everything on that too. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Okay, so, uh, Cool Kids, uh, outside of Conan and Thor, uh, who would you want to draw? I would like to draw. Um, I like Superman. Yeah. And I like uh, Batman, but. Outside of Conan, Conan and Thor, I would say it's a hard one. <laughs> it would, it would, it would probably be. Um, I know I like Black Panther. Um, <laughs> that's some that, Yeah, that's some Oh wow! That one is good because it's a lot of them. I like working on uh, Spider Man. Spider Man, okay. Yeah, I like Spider Man, and it, that would be a challenge for me because. Uh, most of the stories I do, I, I'm always creating buildings and designs and all this different stuff. But Spider Man's in New York, in New York City, and uh, all of the contortions and the things he fights. I like the villains too. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
dream writer? Who would you want to write? Who would you want to be partnered up with? Hmm. Um. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, dead or alive, you can pick anyone. Dead or alive to write with. Wow. Or to work with. Uh, Robert E. Howard. Okay. The one okay. Who did Tarzan and and right. uh, all of the ones he did that, and then uh, I just like the work. The, right. the way he did, and, you know, he wrote Conan and right. all that stuff too. So that would, I would like to basically take some of his original stories and do my take on them. Ooh, that'd be interesting. You know, because when I was a, a kid living in the country, you know, mm -hmm. I'm reading it and I'm not taking it from any other. It was total imagination reading the story. And Wait, because yeah, because you are yeah, you're, you're a country boy. Mm -hmm. So and they're dealing with lands that are completely the exact opposite. Yeah, it's not like being in the city. Uh, we. You know, we were we were raising animals and doing farm work. Yeah. <laughs> so getting a chance to read there, and then the the crazy the crazy person I'd like to illustrate would be uh, Edgar Allan Poe. And that'd be fun. That would be interesting. I, I would like to see Cause, that. Because uh, as a as a, a ten year old, my my cousins were all reading Edgar Allan Poe and different things like this, and so I got introduced to him early. Uh, and so that was that was that's an interesting <laughs> dynamic to think about. Who would you like to illustrate? Right. Mm. Okay, so uh, Fandemic, you'll be there uh, all three, all, all three days. days. Okay, yeah. and now 14, 15, 16. Okay, so, and mm. for the fans uh, watching this, is, yeah, September. Uh, 14th, 16th. That's what I said. <laughs> God. Are you uh, are you doing commissions? Yes, I'll okay. be doing commissions. Um, uh, let's see, pre commissions and during the show. Okay. And uh, since I'm right here in Houston, if there's a, people that want like bigger commissions, like some of the ones I did with uh, <laughs> some of the uh, some people have been asking for Ooh. larger commissions. So I brought one for you guys to see, which is the Black Panther. That is actually I'm gonna get this out of the way so it gets like, the the so. proper. So yeah, I'll do commissions and I'll be doing some here in Houston. Uh, people that want larger commissions and different things like that can actually pre-order those by hitting me online or something. Yeah, yeah that, that's she was the one who designed the suit. Yeah, no, she. So, we interviewed her. She was Ruthie yeah. Carter. Ruth E. Carter was such a sweetheart. She is, and I, I, I and she was. You want me to sign it? And I was like, <laughs> yes. I so she did, and I'm trying to get all the signatures of all the people that I can meet. That were involved in it. That'd be that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, Rob, uh, before before I leave, uh, stay on the commissions. What are your prices? So that people know. Um, what I do with my prices is uh, some people are always saying, "Oh, you're charged too too little." I said, "But I always like the people to come and have an opportunity to leave with some artwork." So my prices start around sixty to eighty okay. for pencils on mm -hmm. eleven by seventeen. Okay. And then if they want uh, ink and color and things like that, it goes up from there. If you wanted a, a one of the bigger pieces, they usually start about one fifty to two hundred. Okay. But it's it's like huge. No, that that that's a work of art. Yeah. I mean, that's a legit work of art. Thank you. Um, <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, all right, Rod, well, thank you so much for the interview. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at Pandemic, yeah. September 14th, 15th, 16th. There you go. All right. There you go. Thank you. All right, so, you know what? I, I wasn't done. I thought I was done, but I wasn't okay. done. All right, so, Rod, you've got the Black Panther paint, uh, artwork here. Mm -hmm. So, what is your process? How do you start? Well, what I did was I wanted to try to capture what the movie made me feel like. Okay. And not just a drawing of the Black Panther in his costume posing like a lot of a lot of artists do. Nothing wrong with that. But right. to me, I think uh, going from fine arts to comic art, mm -hmm. I always wanted to feel like it's a piece of art. And uh, and, and and I know that it, it, when you do comic books, it's art as well. But uh, I wanted to have an emotion to it. So I, it's called the Spirit of the Black Panther, and it shows his transition from here to the Panther that's behind everything. And you remember when the trees were. The, pen, the spirits were in the tree. Oh yeah. And then it shows him in full. Costume. I mean, the detail you have in this is uh, insane because you've got you know T'Challa, Killmonger, mm -hmm. Sir, but with the eyes, and then you hit the fact that you have the two former Black Panthers as mm -hmm. Panthers, and then that you have to coming out of almost the, the root of the tree. And you see, is the the breath is his chest, and the mouth is the bottom of his costume goes into the grass oh. so it's it's a uh, it's it's like if you look at just this part it could be a portrait of the three main characters right if you look at just that part you get the spirit behind the black panther 
And then if you look at just this part at the bottom, you'll see him as he is. So it's, it's all, you know, uh, I, I try to make it where everything fits in. And these are the two halves of him, a cousin and a sister. Now, when you start, so I, I, you know, I see how you did all that, but like, how, do, how, what is your process? What do you start with first? Um, try to get the concept of what I wanted to, okay. to be in it. So I started with uh, his, his face and the two characters here and how they blend. And uh, if you notice that, that she has the, the, the two gauntlets for the Black Panther too, and then he has another, the spear and the other costume. Mm -hmm. So all, all of them kind of become this. So when I think about it like that, I say, oh, okay, so I'll put the portrait in the, in the, in there that, because I think he, him as an actor, right. portrayed the, the character like nobody else could. No. So uh, I started out with him as the focal point, and then everything was built around that, him and the Panther. Yeah, stunning. Because it, it does, it looks absolutely like like so Obviously, you know, it's pencil, but it's mm -hmm. still, it's, it's... Yeah, it's just, uh, I use uh, four different lead weights. Okay. Uh, the hard leads to do all the, the light work, and the soft leads is where you get all the darkness. It, it comes in the, the, the rich blacks, and it looks like ink in some time, but it's all pencil. It looks, it, and especially from the, the photos, it's going to look ink. Mm -hmm. It's all pencil, and it's absolutely breathtaking. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. Oh, oh. Did you do you scratch? Uh, do you scratch the, the, the whiskers in? Actually, I use um, a, a white ink. Oh, okay, that to makes do more sense. Just the whiskers. That makes more sense. Because uh, on the on the, it, it looks it makes the picture have texture. Yes, it does. And then uh, I don't shade. Everything in here is cross hatching. Uh, even when you look at the hairs in his beard and the hair in the oh afro, it is. It's it is no shade and it's all cross hatching. Tiny little lines. Yeah, and, and all of the hairs on the panther going in the same direction. So that takes a while to get it done like that. How, does some, how long does something like this take you? This would take me about anywhere from 60 to 70 hours. You know? And then some of the other ones are you know, anywhere from 60 to 100, like the Star Wars picture and some different ones like that. All right, well, Rod, thank you so much. Hey, and we will see again. you at Fandemic. All right, we'll see you there.